Washington Watch, Joseph Backholm, sitting in for Tony today. And in the last segment, we got an on-the-ground report from Tony Perkins regarding the devastation left behind by Hurricane Ida. Thankfully, Tony and his family are just fine, but many are not so fine right now, and they are in need of prayer and practical assistance. And with me now to talk about his group's response to the Category 4 storm is Franklin Graham, president of Samaritan's Purse. Franklin, welcome to the program. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Well, we are thankful for you and your organization and uh, those like you who run to trouble and provide assistance. Uh, But first, tell us, what's your assessment of the situation in Louisiana and that region? Well, no question. There's a lot of damage. And um, a a lot of the assessments, so we won't be able to get accomplished for the next couple of days because the, uh, the authorities are not letting people in right now. Uh, because there, you have power lines down across highways, trees are down across highways, and uh, and they're still doing search and rescue. Um, and as soon as the search and rescue element is over with, that should be maybe hopefully by tomorrow or the next day, uh, and the roads begin to open up, we'll be able to get in. And then we'll be working with our church partners, uh, going into the, uh, the communities looking for people that are not insured, uh, people that uh, that are elderly that don't have anyone to help them, so forth, and try to try to focus on them first. And uh, there'll be a lot of roof damage. There'll be flooding, um, and of course, uh, when you have a storm like this, uh, it just it just hits everybody in, in the path of that storm. And yes. so we'll we'll be setting up. We've got um, we're out we're in Alabama right now with our trucks waiting uh, to get in. And then um, when, when the word is given, we'll, we'll move in. We could be in place in a few hours. Yeah. So we're just letting the storm get out of the way so we get to work. How big is the affected area that you think is going to really need um, this kind of relief effort? Oh, my. It's, it's, uh, I don't know how you would measure it because it's not just New Orleans and, and Louisiana. But you have to look up into, into like the middle part of Tennessee. Oh, it's first the Jackson area, but then it's going over to the middle part of Tennessee, where they had a tremendous amount of flooding just a few weeks ago. And now to bring all this rain on top of that saturated ground, there's going to be more destruction up there. So then this storm is going, to, is going to create a path from New Orleans, I'm afraid, all the way to, uh, into the Washington, D.C. area. And it's, uh, it's, it's big. And uh, and again, some of this ter- some of this ground is already saturated with water from a few weeks ago. So, how what areas do you, is New Orleans the area that has been hit hardest? I know this the the piece of ground that we're talking about right here now, is massive. Yeah, you know, no question. Uh, New Orleans, because of the wind, they'll have a lot more wind damage uh, as well as flooding because of the tidal surges, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're looking also the north of uh, Lake Pontchartrain. Uh, that area there it seemed to got hit hard. And from just what we can tell, we'll be setting up in New Orleans. Uh, we were there after Katrina. We've got a lot of church partners in that area. And then we, we will probably set up three different locations in Louisiana uh, to respond just uh, to this. And uh, we already have units up in Tennessee working. And they'll just hunker down and we'll be ready to go again. Jackson, Mississippi, we actually have a COVID, uh, one of our field hospitals, set up there at the University of uh, of Mississippi at Jackson. And um, so that that mobile hospital is inside a a, uh, a, uh, parking garage. And so we're safe as far as, you know, wind blowing the tents down or anything like that. But it still is very difficult, uh, you know, treating the COVID patients. And then now dealing with a storm on top of that. It really is a, a convergence of storms, literally. Now, I want you to tell people where they can go to be part of your efforts, but also what does the, the recovery effort uh, to this look like? What kind of equipment, manpower do you need? And then again, remind people how they can be part of supporting what you're doing. Well, we, we do need volunteers. So there's no question about it. Uh, we need men and women who are willing to be the hands and feet of the Lord Jesus Christ 
and come down and, and volunteer and spend a, a weekend, spend a week, whatever the case may be. Uh, a, a lot of, it's just manual labor. It's, you know, you're cutting a tree off a roof. It's helping someone clean up a yard, mud out a home. And uh, it, when a person has lost so much, many times they just sit there and they don't know what to do first. And when a crew comes in and, and, and all of a sudden muds out the home, cleans it up, and uh, now now they see light at the end of the tunnel, and it gives them a little bit of hope. And it gives us, of course, an opportunity to share the gospel. So we're right. looking for volunteers and go to SamaritansPurse.org, SamaritansPurse.org. And uh, you can click on to uh, our relief response. You can volunteer right there. And we certainly, uh, we're looking for volunteers. That's the big thing right now. SamaritansPurse.org. And Franklin, very quickly, got about 30 seconds. How long is the recovery effort going to take? How long are you going to need volunteers? Uh, well, we need from uh, for months to come. We talk about up into November at least. Okay, so that is your your call, folks. Thank you so much for, for doing it. SamaritansPurse.org. Also, we will link to that at TonyPerkins.com. But Franklin, uh, we appreciate you taking the time. We appreciate you giving us the opportunity to serve others and to, as you said, be the hands and feet of Jesus. Appreciate everything you do in your time today. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. God bless.